All right, here are quiz five solutions for math uh, 211. So what you have in this first problem is we talked about six different methods of modeling either multiplication or division. We got the rectangular array, the Cartesian product. I don't know why some of these are capitalized and some aren't. A tree diagram, repeated addition, partitive division, and measurement division. One, two, three, four, five, six. And what you're supposed to do is take these six problems here and match them up. So checkerboard's length, um, and briefly justify your answer. Maybe I'll just talk more to briefly justify it. Checkerboard's length and width are each eight squares. How many total squares are on the checkerboard? Uh, there's 64 squares, but that's not what the question is. The question is, which of these models, um, this would be your rectangular array. The idea with the rectangular array, and maybe I'm going to write somewhere, C video for justifications. So I can just talk and not write. So this briefly justify. A uh, rectangular array, because the idea for a rectangular array is if you know the length and the width, you can figure out kind of the area of that array. If it's 8 by 8, it's area. It's total amount of squares. It would be 64. Uh, this next one, every day I find five more gray hairs in my beard. How many new gray hairs will I find this week? Um, I thought of this as repeated addition. And that came from kind of... You got five on Monday and five more on Tuesday, so now I'm up to 10, and five more on Wednesday, so I'm up to 15, and so on. Uh, so for me, repeated addition makes the most sense here. Uh, the next one, if a group of friends can each eat 10 sushi rolls, what is the least amount of friends necessary to finish an order of 80 rolls? Okay, so first note that this is a division problem, not a multiplication problem. Uh, what kind of division? Well, we have two, partitive and measurement. In the partitive method, you are told how many groups you have. Whereas in the measurement method, you are told the size of the groups. So I have 80 rolls, um, but what the question comes down to is what is this 10? Is this the size of my groups or is this the number of groups? If a group of friends can each eat 10 rolls each, this is the size. Think about them as you're going to take 80 rolls and you're going to put them into, you got the people, maybe I'll write this, people are your groups. So you're going to take these 80 rolls and you're going to allocate them 10 each to the people. So this would be measurement. You'll measure out groups of size 10. The Oregon Ducks have eight different jersey options, three different helmets, and two different pants or pants options. The point is they wear a lot of different uniforms. How many different uniforms can they wear? Well, this would have to be our tree diagram. Um, this is the only method for multiplication that we have for multiplying more than two numbers together at least all at once, of the models that we talked about. If it takes Mike 20 minutes to mow a lawn, how many lawns can he mow in two hours? Well, note that this is division as well. And actually, the way it's written, this is measurement division as well, so I'm going to change it. I'm going to say, if, uh, if Mike has to mow 10 lawns, in two hours, how long can he spend on each lawn? Um, and if I get rid of this problem and change it into this problem, now all of a sudden it's the partitive method of division. The way you think about it is you kind of have two hours worth of minutes. You got 120 minutes and you're going to partition them to the 10 lawns. So the lawns are the groups. So this would be partitive division as opposed to the measurement division that we have up here. Um, and I guess you could use process of elimination, but I won't. Uh, this says gym A has four boxers, gym B has three boxers. If a fight is to be scheduled between one member of each gym, this is our Cartesian product. You can think about it like the first set are the boxers from gym A, the second set are the boxers from gym B, and what you're looking for are ordered pairs, one element from set A and one element from set B, Cartesian product. Uh, all right, number two, determine if the following statements are true or false. If they're true, justify. If not, provide a counterexample. All right, the non-negative whole numbers are closed under division. That is false. Counterexample, I don't know, five divided by two is not 
a non-negative whole number. The answer is two and a half, but that's not one of these numbers, so this set of non-negative whole numbers is not closed under division because you can take two elements of the set to produce a third element that is not in the set. The commutative property holds for multiplication. Sure does. Uh, I don't know. A times B equals B times A. For any numbers A and B, multiply them, the order changes. For any numbers... A and B. Something to that effect, commutative property does hold for multiplication. The associative property holds for division. That is false. Let's see if I can make the numbers work out here. 24 divided by 4. Yeah, that'll work. 4 divided by 2. Uh, let's look at it two different ways. Let's look at it like this. And let's look at 24 divided by 4 divided by 2. And I think we'll get two different answers. This top one gives us 24 divided by 2, because 4 divided by 2 is 2, which is equal to 12. This bottom one, 24 divided by 4, gives us 6, and 6 divided by 2 equals 3. There is an identity element for multiplication. Sure is. Um, 1 times any number is the same as any number times one, which is equal to that number for any number a. There is an identity, identity element for multiplication. It's the number one, um, and this is the definition for it. Um, so I guess that ends the quiz.